A prison phone call between Ruby Frankie and what sounds like her sister Bonnie has been released. In the phone call, she dishes everything on Jody Hildebrand, what she thinks of her now, what exactly happened the day they were arrested, and why she thinks Jody took the plea deal. Did you see that Jody pled guilty today? I did see that. Yes, is that a relief for you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. a big relief. It's a yeah. big relief. There, there would have been positive the other way too. Had she not pled guilty, there's enough evidence that she would have been, could have been convicted for life. But um, yeah, that would have been messy. It would have been really okay. messy, and yeah, the I'm kids would have. So, do you and her get the same outcome no matter what now, or is there a chance that it would be different? We can still have different outcomes. So um, Ellie asked a little bit about this. Um, I wrote it out in a text um, to her. But So the next thing that will happen is I will fill out and she will fill out a probation um, paperwork. And basically you go through your history and you tell them your history, which there's no history on me. There's nothing, yeah. no criminal history, no mental health history, nothing. Um, and I'm also hiring um, a professional to do a mental health evaluation just to say she's she's good, like there's no mental health problems at all. And then that will go to my probationary board. Jody, she can lie on her paperwork and she probably will. I don't think she's going to give them her history. But I think in the interview, it's going to be apparent that she's mentally ill. Mm -hmm. um, and so that will affect how long someone, you know, because they're looking how, how repentant are you, how much responsibility are you taking how how are you aware that what you've done is wrong and she's not she's the only reason she pled is because she didn't want to do life and she knew I would testify um, the other thing is on my plea deal when I come up for probation the the prosecuting attorney can, um, well, often if they think that you're a danger to society, we'll talk to the probationary board and, and or write them a letter saying, I think she needs to stay where she is. Um, he's going to stay neutral and not write any letter when my probation comes up, which is a really big deal. But for her, he's, he's not going to stay neutral. So... Uh -huh. We can come up to probation and I can get off on probation and she may not. So I, I think that you probation, getting off on probation, I think looks like there's several different ways that that could happen. Oh, that's after you have served some time? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what that is going to be. I don't know if it's... One of the girls said that it would be for me six months, but I've also heard it could be four years. And some people serve several years before they ever see their probation board. So I, I'm really still, I mean, I could be in there four years. I could be in there 30. Like, I really don't know. The news that I saw today, Jody's um, sentence hearing is also February 20th. So I'm going to make a request that we be transferred in two different vans. I don't think they're going to accommodate that. Oh, uh, do they? Okay, I see. Yeah, when we, so when I went to the courthouse last week, what they do, and, I, and I, they did this when they transported me to Utah County as well, they pull all the girls. There's only two housing here for girls. There's not very many girls here. But there's uh -huh. 
many for the men. And so they take the girls and they put them in a cell together, in a holding cell to wait, and then they get all the men together and they put all the men in the cells. And then they start putting on the ankle bracelets and the chains and the Mm-hmm. everything on the men while you're so you're sitting in the cell with these women you're going to the court with for an hour and you're sitting with them and then they pull the girls out and they line you up and then they put the shackles on you and then they take the men out to the van the men's van and then they, they take the women out to the women's van and then you drive to the courthouse together and then you sit in a cell at the court so if someone's hearings at nine this is what happened to me there was a girl that went with me and her hearing was at nine but mine wasn't till 11. so she went in and she had like a five minute hearing and then we sat in the cell and talked for two hours until it was my turn. And then we oh. rode back together. So you, you pretty much spend several hours together, whoever is okay. going to the court that day with you. Interesting. So that mm-hmm. means on February 20th, it would be you and her going together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When was the last time you talked to her? Was it that day? Mm-hmm. It was when we were arrested. Okay.